Good morning. Uh, I'm glad to have you all here. My name is Maria Tomasia, and I'm the chairwoman of the Board of Election Commissioners for the city of New Bedford. Uh, we are responsible for the conducting of all the elections in the city of New Bedford, and it includes voter registration, polling place arrangements, appointments and training of election officials, printing of ballots, preparation and election supplies, uh, maintenance of voting equipment and so forth. Um, we invited you here today to showcase the new voting equipment for the city of New Bedford. We are actually the first city in the state with this new technology. The old machines that we have had for the past 18 years, which is the Optech Equal 3, uh, made by election system and software is obsolete. These machines are no longer being manufactured. Um, there are no parts available and we have had to cannibalize, cannibalize uh, equipment, the old equipment we have in order to uh, repair the um, machines. This is the newest, uh, most modern technology, which is the DS200. There's a lot of improvements over the uh, previous machine. And uh, as you can see, also has an interactive screen, which is the most important uh, aspects of this new uh, technology. In the past, whenever someone casted a ballot and it was overvoted or undervoted, it would, um, s would s signal the uh, correction that had to be made on the ballot in a um, piece of paper that was part of the machine or the process that was an ongoing process. Uh, this new technology will avoid that issue because at that point when you had to correct it, you had to have the warden or the clerk review the ballot with you. This kind of differentiated some of the voters who felt they didn't, don't want and shouldn't have anybody look at their ballot. This machine will show you on the screen what was overvoted or undervoted. You then can have the ballot returned to you for correction, or get a new ballot if you've overvoted, correct that and accept it, or then just accept it as is. They don't want to, let's say the voter does not want to make any correction, it will accept it and vote it. And it will automatically, and we will show this to you, give you the message that your vote has been counted, and thank you for voting. And they will have an ongoing public count, which is the first number on the screen so that the candidates will still have the option to see how many votes have been cast at that precinct. The results are now also in uh, a thumb drive or a USB device that they have, which is also going to be much faster at the end of the night when the results come in. Um, much, much less work for the poll workers since the machine uh, talks to them and basically tells them what to do. So that um, the access to the ballots is much easier as we're in the old machines, we had a box and you really had to reach in there to get the ballots out. And at the end of the night we had issues where some of the ballots would be stuck to the sides of the machine and we would only find that out after when they were picking up the material. That's not gonna be happening that much anymore. And we also still have is the uh, safety issue, which is if anything happens to the machine, um, we have a box which is going to be uh, a security issue that the, va the voting will never ever stop. They will uh, put the ballots into this area here. And then once the machine is up and running, you will then be able to run those through and be, know that your vote has been counted. You know that the votes have been counted. This is another security issue that uh, we now have. Before we used to have a line through the entire ballot, we now have a little circle that basically, if you have to have a recount, you know that ballot has gone through the machine because it will have a little circle in red indicating. So there is no way to say, you know, how do I know that this actually was counted? You know because if it didn't go through the machine or the DS200, it would not be able to have a marking. So this thing about ballot, feeding or feeding ballots into the, is a myth. It doesn't exist. Um, let me see, what other issues can I tell you? Um, and the, the, also when the, the ballot is held in the machine, whenever there's an error made or an overvote, 
until uh, the voter decides what he wants to do. So it holds it there. If it wants to be returned, it will come right back out. This has been tested by the Federal Election Commission um, in 2013. It then has been, uh, a demonstration has been done before the Secretary of State's office. This has to be approved by the federal government, state government, Secretary of State approved this this year in May of 2014 and uh, did two tests, one in March 25th in Concord and one in April 1st in Reading. So that after that, those two um, voting areas were conducted successfully, the Secretary of State then has approved this machine and certified it. We cannot purchase any machine or the companies cannot sell them until they're certified both by the state and the federal government. And these have both, and of course, this is all a result of the issues in the past that we've had with voting, starting back to 2000 and continue to have some issues. So this is going to address a lot of this machine, will address and correct a lot of those problems. Um, it, it includes a lot of um, different styles. It's a 12 inch screen that we have and the ballots can be as long as 19 inches, 15 to 19 inches long. So there is plenty of room for like this year's state election. It's a long ballot and there is no issue. It will accommodate any ballot, one column, two column, and three columns. Um, and it's very voter friendly, which is one of the issues. I like the machine is I don't want it complicated. The easier, the better. And this is a very easy machine, a voter friendly and interactive machine for the voters of the city of New Bedford. And I'm very confident and feel very um, alert or very um, happy about the, the purchase of these machines through this company that we have actually have dealt with them. Uh, have dealt with this company for the past 18 years and we've had a very good relationship and continue to uh, improve that with this new equipment. Did you want to uh, address the write-ins like we've, we've had problems in the past? Yeah. Oh yeah, the, the, yeah the, the other issue with that the write-ins also is a new issue with this machine. In the past, there was um, the ballot box was divided so that you would have the write-ins separated from the regular ballots. With this machine, it all is going to go into one bin at the bottom. And that is for the reason that at the end of the night, they just used to count just the write-in ballots. In this machine, at the end of the night, the poll workers have to actually go through every single ballot for write-ins. And that they will separate that and do those write-ins and then in the write-in sheet. Um, and that was one of the things mandated by the Secretary of State's office to make sure that nothing is um, overlooked uh, in this process. Uh, we are going to have um, cast a couple of ballots which we have, which is sample ballots about, it's a make-believe election, so you can see actually the screen functions and works, okay? Oh, the other issue, very, very important, the, um, the machines in the past only accepted the um, special pen uh, that we have for, uh, for this machine. You could only could use it, a number two pencil or reflective pen that we have. This machine will actually accept anything, any marking, even though it's preferable to use the reflective pens, it will take pencil, pen, and it will read just about anything, which is something we, in the past, that we had to put aside some of the ballots, especially absentee ballots, because people were not marking them with number two pencils, they were marking them with a regular pen. But this machine addresses that issue, it there won't be any problem at all. Okay, now I'll have the girls uh, all cast a ballot of their favorite ice cream, the favorite singer. <laughs> all right, Dan, how about your ballot? Everybody's gotta vote. Yeah. <laughs> Betsy Klein. <laughs> Show your favorite car. Lamborghini? No. Oh. oh. Damn it. Jeez. I'll just stick with a plain old Ferrari. <laughs> yes, oh. Yeah. 
anyway, this is also, the ballot can go in in any way, upside down, right side up, doesn't make any difference. Overvoted is telling me yeah. the, okay. which one. Okay. Correct your ballot? Yeah. Correct the ballot. Yeah. You, you, you oh, cast, cast your ballot it. with a mistake. John. Yeah. So you, now it, it won't count. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Jonathan, do one. So you what happens one. when they... Uh, when it's when corrected, it, it brings it back, back to... Out. Yes, it comes back out. You take it. And you, if it's an overvote, you actually have to get a new it's ballot. Not ballot. Now, no, because uh, she said accept it as is. Okay. 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 So that yeah. overvote is void. No. It's void well, because that yeah. Will be void, That's but the just it will, will be counted. I see. Okay. Yeah, because it basically the machine. <laughs> yeah, let's do go one ahead. with a. Go ahead. I do one. Where's my real regular pen? Yeah. Oh, you want to use this one? Do you want to go? I want to use some non. It will say you've undervoted also. On can, the other ones. Yeah. Now if I correct it. Yep. What I really need to do is exchange it for a new one. You, you, yeah, we do void. We will put void on this and give you another ballot. You could actually, by you, you can get up to three ballots okay. on an election. But you can only it submit said to one. Go see yeah. It, it said to see a clerk. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, and that's basically it. It's, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's not all it. We also have, we're all new equipment because we were also probably the city with the oldest voting booths. The voting booths we've had for the past hundred years actually came in by rail into the city. Um, these, there was a lot of security and safety issues as well as with the ballot boxes that we had. Uh, the security was practically non-existent. It was um, very cumbersome to work. These are the new boots. It's a quad, and they will accommodate four people at one time. And this one actually accommodates the, uh, someone who's um, handicapped in any form um, that the chair will fit into this area here, and they can actually vote at that level. That is required also by law. One of the boots at every precinct will be one with the handicap accessibility, and the rest will be the regular height for the voters, and they will also have a light. The new um, ballot bags, which is the ones we've had also, were over 100 years old. Uh, if for safety security, we used belts with tape, which was not practical, very time consuming. They will now have like the bags uh, used at the banks, will be a lock bag with wheels that you can actually um, wheel these to the polling places from the uh, storage area and so forth. So uh, this will be a lot easier for us. And we have the blue will be the uncast ballots, which would mean all the ballots that go out in the morning that have not been voted will be on that bag. Once at the end of the night, once the ballots are cast, the cast ballots was actually come into the in this bag and the police of course return those at the end of the night with the machine um, in order for us to uh, process um, in the results of the election we have 42 we have 36 precincts we got a backup just in case of an emergency we got a backups one for each ward one machine um, so we have big 42 42 voting machines that we have the total cost was $236,000. Um, uh, that's costing us. Um, but then they also um, did a two year service contract at a reduced price uh, in addition to um, take a trade in of the old machines, which was not much, but still is you know, a way, good way to the, get rid of them. The voting booths, those are all going to be at the. At yes. The these cost eight hundred dollars a piece. Eight hundred a piece. A piece. Per precinct. Uh, they, that's going to depend. Some precincts are bigger than others, so we will have four, which will be sixteen voting areas, and some will have three, and some might even have five. For this election, I don't think it's going to be a very busy election, so probably we'll have 
a minimum of three in each precinct, but the bigger ones will probably have four. And what was the cost of those? Uh, $800 and 29. 829 for each one. Sorry. Yeah? Yeah, but we got 100. What about the bags? Yeah, the bags, that was a minor expense compared. These were $134 a piece uh, with the embroidery, which is uh, put on um, free of charge. That was included as part of the price. Um, and now we have to actually is to identify each ward and precinct. But that was only a $10,000. Do you have a total sum cost of what the change is costing the city? Over $400,000. Well, that came from, uh, part of it was bonding. The new chief financial officer, uh, when he had to put his uh, improvements for the city or the plan, five-year plan, uh, we had to address the issues that were really of concern. And of course, this has been my concern for 25 years. And finally, after 25 years, uh, we got the other machines, but now with the boots, which I thought were uh, absolute horror, um, and the bags also, and those two are addressed you know, very efficient. And what he did is the, we get compensated by the state for the additional polling hours for every state election and federal election. And what he did is he put that money aside on capital outlay for the special, for the reimbursement we had for this additional hours and the special elections we've had in the past two years. So that part of the bonding that they had for this uh, was only a hundred I want to say maybe 100000 that came from the bonding issue for the city. The rest was something that we had put already put aside on capital outlay, which I thought was an excellent way of uh, addressing this issue. Yeah, this will be a lot easier for setup, even for setup. We could, the other machines every year, we'd go uh, through them and throw some of them away because the wood, there's parts on it that are antiques that we couldn't even repair or we couldn't even replace. So this is a much efficient, lighter, and a better way of doing it. <coughs> because the other ones were this size, but you had one person for each precinct, for each uh, booth or area. As with this one, you're going to have four in one. Maybe I missed it, but how long did we have the old machines, did you say? We had them since 1997. <coughs> and they have been, they were very good. I, you know, I love those machines. They're very sturdy, very reliable. We've had no issues with them, for the except that the fact they don't make them anymore, and very likely the state eventually, everybody's going to be required to go into the new voting system. And I think by 2006 for the presidential elections, most cities and towns are going to be required to change over. And you we are ready there. The old ones anymore, no, right? they don't make them. To use the they have not made them for over five years. On the new machines, getting the results <coughs> of voting back to you at City Hall, is that done electronically? This has the potential of being done electronically or through, um, uh, what do you call it, electronic ways or whatever. But right now it will be the same as before, but instead of a, a VCR or a cassette, we'll have a thumb drive the same way. Oh, I get it right here. <coughs> Yeah, there's the emergency bin is the top one, and the bottom one, and the, the silver, yeah, the silver key. So it's the thumb drive that comes back to you? Yes. At the end of the night, they're going to do that, bring, take out the thumb drive, close down the polling place, and then bring it into the police or the detectives will bring it to us. The chance of error is very small. <coughs> very, very small. And any type of, or any security is unbelievable because even there's no way that anybody can uh, break that code or the security right. in these. Are these in other states? Is, Pardon me? Did you get this model from other states? Do you know where this is the, the, the company SNS is out in the headquarters is out in Nebraska. Okay. And they've been in the business for over 40 years. So okay. they, they, they know well the machines. They're very involved with every aspect of uh, anything to do with elections, with the election commissioners. They work with us, they've been very successful in that aspect, so I'm, I'm happy with this company. So I thought they are used in other states currently? They, they are being used and will be used. Uh, this over, I believe the company, oh, I didn't bring it with me. They already have over 40 something thousand units being used throughout the United States. Okay. Yeah. Do you know how many states? 
I have that information, I can give it to you. Yeah. yeah, but this will be the, the standard for the future. Uh, most of the equipment that are out there presently will become obsolete. Do you think the rest of Massachusetts will move with these? Oh, they are going. By next year, this is the, by 2016 presidential primary, to avoid issues as we've had in the past, they're going to have to. The Everyone? states, the states is, you're going to have to find money somewhere. Because a lot of the commissioners, actually, this was approved too late for this year. Because by the end of May, you had to have uh, notified the Secretary of State within 90 days. So most people are already too late, and the monies that were allocated were then put into other budgets. But uh, like Reading, I believe, is going to go into it next year, and several other cities and towns. Quincy is also looking into doing uh, Springfield. Just about every one of the big cities will be in, too. Maria, do you think it's going to be confusing for people going from drawing the line to the bubble? They just drew the line, the primary, now they're going to be doing the bubble. Yeah. It's going to confuse them? Or you think I don't think so. But even if it does, as we saw, we played around with it. it didn't make, you can do a check, you can do a cross, you can do a line. It will still count it. I don't think it will be. But like with, even with this, when we went from an X to, that took several years for people to actually get the hang of it and really understand the process. So, But we will have... And we've done training to the poll workers, advising them that as they are the, the voters going into the poll, into the polling place, that they will tell the voter, please remember that this is a new med to the voting and you will fill in the circle and make sure that you vote both sides of the ballot, which is another issue that a lot of people will not turn over the ballot so that this year the ballot is a state ballot, it's long, and they have to make sure they do both sides of the ballot. The old method of voting under the Optac Eagle Tree, you had to collect, uh, connect the shaft in the arrow. In this new method of voting, you will be uh, filling in the oval next or in front of the candidate you are choosing. And that's the only difference. It can be marked uh, in any type of ink. It doesn't have, but we recommend that we use the uh, reflective pens that will be at the polling places, number two pencils, preferably, rather than any other markings. And that is the only difference you're going to be seeing. The ballot will be basically the same as you've always had. The only thing is the new machines will be interactive so that you will be able to correct any overvoting that has been done or undervoting. Um, so let's... And again, it can be fed into the machine in any direction, upside down, right side up, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, as you can, it tells me, overvoted contest on the best vocal artist. I have the option to correct the ballot or cast it. Let's say, oh, I like them all. I want to cast the ballot. And basically, it will count it. We've already put in three ballots. And they thanks you for voting. 